Hi guys, it's Metal Maniac back again, and uh, this time I'm going to be doing a review on uh, the album Altars of Madness by Morbid Angel. Um, for those of you who don't know, Morbid Angel is a legendary old school death metal band, and I believe they're still uh, still going on, I don't think they're retired. Um, but yeah, this is their first album, Altars of Madness, uh, released back in 1989. And uh, it seems like a lot of the old school death metal albums, the uh, a lot of the old school death metal bands, their first albums, a lot of them were '89. Um, I guess that was death metal's boom period. Um, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, first off, the uh, artwork. Uh, this is not the original artwork. This is. I at first I thought it was a zoom in, but now that I look at it, it almost looks like a recreation. To make it look like it's zoomed into the original artwork, but it's not. It's a different artwork, just somewhat similar. Um, yeah, the original artwork was. Uh, I don't have the version with the original artwork, but the original artwork was like it was like a round sphere thing with fossilized uh, souls in it, and like around the sphere there was like uh, 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 I guess like a blue vortex. I I think or just blue sky uh, with lightning. Um, but yeah, so and then. This compared to the other version that's not the original version is you can kind of see the blue sky here in the corners, but uh, it seems with every re release, the uh, picture just gets less and less of what it was. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's the artwork. Um, uh, they're the band members, so uh, it's um. <clears throat> Pete Sandeville on drums, Richard Brunel on lead guitar, uh, Trey, I just mispronounced this dude's last name, Trey Agathoff on guitars, and of course, David Vincent on vocals and bass. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, David Vincent was the uh, original uh, singer for the band until I believe their fourth album, I don't remember which one that was, but, uh, yeah, he was the original singer, and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so, this album's great, let's see, uh, first off, Immortal Rights, this one starts off, um, pretty suddenly, like, uh, this song is just very, very, very fast-paced, and majority of the songs, if not all of them, are very, very fast-paced, um, but, uh, yeah, Immortal Rights is awesome. Suffocation is pretty cool. Um, it's good, but it's one of the lesser songs. Even. And it's weird, because it's a great song, but compared to the rest, it's sort of lesser. Um, Visions from the Dark Side is really, really cool. Um, it kind of, the title kind of reminds me of Tales from the Dark Side, or whatever that old 90s horror anthology show was. I uh, haven't seen it in a long, long time. But, uh, yeah. Uh, Maze of Torment reminds me a little bit of um, uh, the, the, the track off of uh, uh, Show No Mercy by Slayer. It was the track uh, uh, Metal Storm slash Faith the Slayer. Can't speak again. Metal Storm slash Faith the Slayer. Uh, that's what Maze of Torment reminds me of. Um, let's see. Lord of All Fears and Plagues. Really, the only bad song on the album. I don't like it. I don't know what it is about it. It just seems boring. Like, like for for old school death metal, which is weird because I love old school death metal. It's one of my favorite kinds of music of all time. Uh, but yeah, Lord of Fe Lord of All Fevers and Plague just is not good. I can't really describe why it isn't, but it just isn't. Uh, Chapel of Ghouls. My favorite Morbid Angel song, and it's it's a Morbid Angel classic for a reason. Um, uh, I don't know what it is about it that makes it so special. Um, yeah, but it's really really cool. Um, I love the part where uh, I think it was like let's the beginning. I think it might be the beginning. I don't know. I'm getting all mixed up here. But uh, we're uh, Tre not Trey, um, uh, David Vincent, where he's like. Ghouls attack the church. The holy priest, like that, really sort of raspy, raspy, raspy kind of vocals, which he does throughout the album. 
Uh, he wouldn't do those really, really raspy vocals on any of the other albums. Uh, with the other albums that he was on, he did more of a guttural sort of uh, traditional death metal vocals, but uh, he did the raspy vocals on this, which I prefer the raspy vocals over the guttural vocals, at least for uh, a David Vincent uh, 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 fronted album. But, uh, yeah. Um, Chapel of Ghouls. Awesome. Um, Bleed for the Devil is pretty cool. Uh, it's... It sometimes gets sort of much together with the rest of the songs. Like, unlike days where I'm, like, very, very alert, very uh, higher in energy, I could very distinguish the song from the rest. But on days where I'm mid to low energy, I, it just, for me in my brain, it kind of just, like, meshes with the rest of the songs. It's a very odd song, but pretty good. Uh, Damnation is one of my favorite off this album. It's really, really good, really memorable. Um, Blasphemy is really cool. Evil Spells is the last track on the album. And, oh, like, it doesn't sound like a song. It sounds just like uh, David Vincent chanting evil spells. Like, like not the not him saying evil spells, evil spells well, even does that. But I'm just saying, overall, it doesn't sound like traditional uh, death metal singing, it just sounds like it kind of actually has the feel of him, like, actually reading from a book of spells. Like, it's really cool. Um, but, uh, yeah. That's the main album. Uh, I know this is the, uh, Ultimate Edition, so it comes with a second disc, second disc, which is the, uh, first live album. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it's really cool. Um, the live album's pretty cool, too. But uh, overall, as the standard album, this is really, really good. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I would give it a 10 out of 10 if, like, I uh, don't know, if Suffocation was more memorable and a few other songs were more memorable. But overall, it's a near-perfect album. Uh, this album actually is actually pretty recent. I mean, not the album, but the, this version of the album. Uh, I got this, I don't know, a month ago, I believe, when it was, fair, when it was like, a day... Like, it was only out for, like, a day or so at that point. Um, this is the most recent re-release, the Ultimate Edition. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. I, uh, I love the, uh, um, Grim Reaper on there. Uh, again, there's a picture of the band. And, um, then, uh, there's the two discs. Uh, the two discs have the same picture, just a skeleton playing a bone flute. Um, but yeah, overall, an awesome, awesome old school death metal album. It's definitely up there uh, as one of the greats. And of course, Morbid Angel is one of the big four of old school death metal, you know, along with uh, Death, Cannibal Corpse, and Obituary. Uh, but uh, yeah, overall, great album, 9 out of 10. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend this. And I highly, highly recommend this version. I mean, I recommend the original version if you really, want, really, really want the other artwork, uh, the original artwork, because I do like that artwork better. But uh, um, now this, uh, before I end the video, I want to talk about oh, slightly more about this particular version, uh, just because I think it really matters. Um, this version is not only the Ultimate Edition that has the live album, but it's uh, also the uh, full dynamic range version, which... Full dynamic range is is not good. Like, I mean, I guess they were going with good intentions, but full dynamic range just messes up. Uh, like, oh, here's the thing: with the original version and its first re-release, like, yeah, the uh, uh, sound you have to turn the volume up a bit to hear it well. But uh, and a bit, I mean, like maybe like one or two uh, uh, volumes higher than the normal set volume, but with the full dynamic range, even though it sounds slightly better, you have to turn the volume up to the max to hear it well. Like, e yeah, even though the volume's better on this one, you have to, like, crank the volume to max to hear it, to actually hear it properly. Same thing with the other full dynamic range version, like the standard version that I just showed you, this version. Um... But, uh, yeah, so if you want to have softer audio quality but still not have to blast it to the max, then I then I suggest you get the uh, original or very first re-release. But if you don't mind that and you just want the uh, 
most up-to-date version, and this is the one. Also, I, I think I've mentioned this in a, another video, but, uh, with a lot of, like, in recent years, in, like, the past, like, three years, um, there's been a lot of re-releases and anniversary editions and ultimate editions that, for whatever reason, don't have the lyric pamphlet. Like, see here, there's a spot for it, but there's no lyric pamphlet. Uh, which is stupid. Just a stupid way of companies saying, Oh, we could save money by not producing a lyric pamphlet. Um, yeah, they're dumb. Uh, but yeah. Overall, great album. Uh, I highly recommend this to anyone who's getting into death metal and wants to know where to start. Uh, this one, I would say this album and uh, uh, Scream Bloody Gore by Death. So, uh, yeah, that's my review of... Oh, hold on, put this back. Um, that's my review of um, <clears throat> Mor Morbid Angel, Altar of Madness. Um, sorry if this was a quicker review, speedy review. I, uh, I don't know, I just have slightly bit more energy today, so if, sorry if I'm going really fast with this review. Um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.